What's up, everybody? It's that time again. Hello, world. It's D to the J with the roll away. I am the Sports Minion, and we are live on www.legoradio.net and also on Facebook Live. Like to welcome everybody as they come in to the two o'clock hour in the Sports Menu Radio Show. Hey, Nikki, Nikki, how you doing? How you doing? Got a great show for you today. Got so many good law. I got so many names in free agency to cover. Everybody's done moved everywhere. I got deals and different stories coming in. I got a great CP topic for today. It's called Just the Facts. We <clears throat> are going to cover. Um, a lot of free agency moves first. Um, there's a couple of short stories that I want to cover, but I want to get into uh, a couple of announcements as we go through uh, the global virtual uh, cerebral palsy conference is coming up. It is starting this Friday at 11.30 a.m., Y'all get ready because I'm telling you my name ain't Freddie. I'm sorry that rhymed. I just had to go with it. Hey, Josh, thank you for joining us. Appreciate it. Uh, we tried to get Josh on the show today, but we're going to have him on next week. We'll figure it out. Ran into some technical difficulties right at the end there, but we were planning on having Josh on the show today, uh, but we are going to get him in next week. Uh, Josh has CP as well, so we're going to, uh, before uh, uh, Cerebral Palsy Awareness Month ends, we're going to get him in. Uh, but I want to go over Again, I, I, I actually uh, did a show with uh, Miss Winnie a couple of days ago. Uh, we actually it wasn't we're on together Sunday. And I'm going to tell you, we had a really good show. Uh, a lot of people were shocked that I stood up on camera. And uh, a lot of people saw that and were really you know, mystified by what was going on. You know, I talked about, you know, the work ethic and, and, and Grandmaster Dark and all that, you know, how it came into my life. But this conference is coming. Starting Friday, it's going to be a week-long conference. You guys, I'm telling you right now, if you want to be a part of something special, do me a favor. Get yourself a pen, get yourself some paper, and write this down or save this address and email this lady. It's Kelly's, K-E-L-L-Y-S, choice, C-H-O-I-C-E, cares, C-A-R-E-S, at Gmail dot com make sure that you email miss winnie and let her know that you want to be part of the cerebral palsy global worldwide cerebral palsy conference coming up starting this friday at 11 30 p.m we have so many great guests so many great people that are going to be a part of this i'm going to be a part of it uh i've got a i've got a special guest coming down with me to to uh to, that's going to actually spend uh, about four days with me. We've been planning this for a while. My buddy Mike is coming in from out of town. Uh, this conference is going to be so powerful. If you guys do not jump on this, you are missing the opportunity of a lifetime. So please, when I tell you this conference is going to be big, with it being a virtual comp uh, a conference like this, we're able to reach so many people we are able to reach so many different uh so many different avenues we are able to 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 go to uh so many different ways of, of getting through to this make sure that you get on your phone get on your computer get on your ipad get on uh it, whatever you can get on get on your your uh social media event whatever you've got Make sure that you grab a hold of this thing and you actually come in to the Global Cerebral Palsy Conference, first one of its kind, first annual. You're never going to see another one like it until next year. But I'm going to tell you right now, y'all are going to want to be part of this. And if you don't grab a hold of it now, you're going to miss it because you can't get in when it's too late. So if you guys want to get in and you guys want to get in on the ground floor on this thing, do me a favor and please contact Miss Wilson at Kelly's K E L L Y S Choice C H O I C E Cares C A R E S at gmail.com. Please make sure that you get in on the ground floor and get 
get to be a part of this thing, you will you will get to have a wonderful time. It's going to be a lot of fun, and you're going to learn a lot about CP, and that's really what you want to do. You want to make sure that you on this thing because these these conferences that come like this is a once in a lifetime opportunity, and you will have a chance to change your life and someone else's. So please do me a favor and grab a hold of it and get in while you can because if you wait much longer, you're going to you're gonna wait and it's going to be too late. Waiting is too late. Got to get on a hold of it. Got to get in there. Got to do what you got to do and go with it, baby. You got to go with all you can and you got to see what you got. If you don't, you're going to be too late and you're going to miss it. Um, all right, so that is the global – Cerebral, Cerebral Palsy Conference starting this Friday uh, at 11.30. Uh, so I will tell you, make sure that you jump on this thing because you're going to miss it if you wait too long. All right, so the next thing I want to mention, we have uh, the CP walk slash roll coming up. We don't have a launch date for that yet, but it is coming. Uh, as soon as we get the information on that, we will let you know. Uh, Miss Min Miss Minnie Miss Winnie is working on it around the clock, uh, along with the, the uh, cerebral palsy conference because that's coming up right now. But we've got the <clears throat> uh, CP walk slash roll coming up, so y'all make sure that y'all get <clears throat> ready for that. If you know anybody with CP, uh, within now in the next couple days, you still got a couple days. <clears throat> if you know anybody with cerebral palsy, sorry for clearing my throat on camera. Please get a hold of them. Let them know about the CP wall. Let them know about the cerebral palsy conference. We gotta push this stuff out. If we don't share this stuff and we don't get it pushed out, you're not going to see the 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 global. This is a global phenomenon. Okay, you've got autism speaks walks. You got spina bifida walks. You got Down syndrome walks. You got ALS walks. You got raising money for this organization walks. That organization. Look. If we want to get CP back on the mount, back on the top of the mountain, and it, and it get it talked about as much as it used to be, this is where we need to grab a hold and say, "Look, this is what we're going to do. We're going to push this thing. We're going to get it out. We're going to move it around." I want to, I want to irritate people to the point where they get tired of hearing about it. They're like, "Why are they talking about this daggone CP so much?" Because it needs to be talked about. And it needs to be pushed because we need to be we need to be strong for ourselves, but we also need to be strong as a cerebral palsy community and be strong for each other. And the only way we're going to get stronger, and the only way we're going to get better, and the only way we're going to get out there is if it's pushed and if it's shared and if it's paced up, uh, posted in groups, if it's talked about, if there are flyers, if there are radio shows. If there are our Twitter posts, if there are Instagram posts, you guys joining these Facebook groups, get them in there because when you get them in there, you got to remember these groups, if they have 300 people, okay, if a cerebral palsy group has 300 people and 300 people click on this video for two or three minutes and they start realizing that we're talking about CP and we're pushing out the issues that need to get out there. And if 300 people share it after they've watched it, that's 300 shares to other people and other groups. And then those people in those groups say, well, dang, this is a big topic. Let this get, let, let, let's get this thing out there. Let's move it around. Let's see what's going on. Let's see what's happening. And then they push it out and they get it further. And you're going, well, wait a minute now. This topic is starting to go viral. It needs to happen. It has been too long that cerebral palsy has been pushed to the back burner. Well, I'm going to tell you what. i got a 352-pound chair, and I weigh 202 pounds, and you ain't going to push me to the back burner no more. So do me a favor. Get on your iPads. Get on your iPhones. Get on all sorts of your social media and your computers everywhere and share this stuff and get it out there because CP matters not only this month but 365 days a year. And as you guys come on the show, I want to welcome everybody who's coming in. Josh, Nikki, thank you. Uh, I can't see who the other person is right now because the name hadn't come up. But I know we got somebody else that's watching, and it's kind of flickering in and out. So uh, we have got we had four viewers at one point. Now we're down to two. So I'm not sure uh, if they're coming back in or not. But, look, we need to get this thing out there. All right, next event I want to cover, uh, we have 
the Battle of the Seven Cent eh, Battle of the Seven Cities under Grandmaster Jack Dart. That's eighth degree black belt. That is going to be June sixth. The Battle of the Seven Cities Martial Arts Championships. All star, all styles are welcome. Twelve hundred dollars in cash. Saturday, June sixth, two thousand twenty. Location: Atlantic Shores Christian School Gymnasium. That's twelve seventeen Centerville. Turnpike, North Chesapeake, 23320. Only 30 minutes from Virginia Beach Ocean Front. Y'all can go to the tournament, come and get your, get your karate on, and then go to the beach and have some fun playing the sand. I don't know with all this coronavirus going around. I don't know if you want to play in the sand or not, but come check this tournament out. Hopefully everything's going to be good with that. June 6th, we're going to have, hopefully, we're going to have this corona thing, uh, 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 CB19 uh, beat by beat by this time. Uh, it is $70 for one or three events. We will have sparring. We will have forms, weapons, and forms empty hand. Those will be the three uh, that we are having the competition in. Uh, children uh, five and under are free. Uh, the spectator fee is $10, and one or, seven, one or three events is $70. Make sure to please bring all of your gear uh, make sure that you wear all of your athletic gear from your headgear to your foot gear, your cup, all of your gloves, feet gear, all of that. Make sure that you do that. Uh, I will tell you uh, the prizes real quick. We're going to have uh, quite a few of them, actually. It will be uh, men's grand championship points sparring will be $400 in a belt. Women's grand championship points sparring divisions will be $400 in a belt. Weapons versus, weapons versus empty hand. Grand Championship will be $300 in a belt. Uh, one point for hand technique, two point for kick. Y'all make sure to get out there early because it's going to fill out, fill up fast. You know when Grandmaster Jack Dart's name is attached to it, it's going to be a big one. I'm going to be there, and this one uh, is going to be a big one. I always compete in the Battle of the Seven Cities. I have for the past nine years. This will be my ninth, nine years in a row. I love everything about it. It's a great tournament, and it's a lot of fun. They're going to have concessions. They're going to have pizza. They're going to have sodas. They're going to have chips, candy. Make sure to bring cash, guys. Cash only, no checks. All right. So, it, and here's the thing: the people that are going to be there are the, that want to be there are the people that's going to be there. The people that show up and are dedicated to it are, are going to have a lot of fun. We need black belt judges. We need uh, uh, scorekeepers. All that. Please contact uh, Grandmaster Jack Dart. You can contact him. Uh, a couple of ways. The studio is 757-416-1120. That's Grandmaster Jack Dart at Taekwondo Champions. Uh, you can also contact him at jdark3 at hotmail.com. That's lowercase j, lowercase d, lowercase a, lowercase r, lowercase k, three, the number three, at hotmail.com if you choose to email him. All right, so those are the events that we've got coming up. I wanted to cover those. Now, let me get through uh, a couple of sports stories for you guys because I've got an action-packed show today. Uh, all right, there's a couple of things, and, and the biggest issue I want to cover, okay, coming out, coming right off the top of the sports show where we are right now. Uh, Tom Brady uh, is no longer with the New England Patriots. Everybody knows about this by now if you've been watching NFL Network. If you have not, Tom Brady has decided and did declare a statement uh, that he would not be returning back to the New England Patriots. So Belichick uh, is – sorry, voice crack on camera there. Belichick is going to have to do it with a new quarterback, no longer having that 20-year veteran. Brady, uh, Brady has been there for 20 years. You know, you're talking about six Super Bowls, all the the uh, AFC championships that he's won, uh, you know, playoff appearances, all this stuff. Brady actually has signed – with the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers for somewhere upward around $30 million uh, per year. We don't know the length of the contract yet, but we do know it is $30 million per year. I would say it's probably going to be in the one to three range at most, possibly one to two, one to three, somewhere in there. So that is going to be the Tom Brady aspect of it. That is where he is. He's he's ready to move on. You know, he sent out a great uh, a great uh, tweet and, and things. You know, uh, message to the team thanking the organization, Mr. Kraft, <coughs> for uh, 
for all of the great memories that he has had, uh, the championships that they have won. He is very grateful, and and Tom Brady has been very grateful in uh, the time that he's had, but he's ready to move on to a new chapter, and I can understand why. Uh, Tom Brady has taken several pay cuts for several years, and he is worth quite a bit of money. And, and, and here's the thing. I'm not going to sit here and put it up on a pedestal, but when you've gone to six Super Bowls or you've gone to ten and, and, and won six, I mean, come on. Can you really tell me that that is not the greatest quarterback of all time? There, there's no way to deny that. A lot of people say he's not. But I'm telling you right now, this right here, Brady is going to have a chance to win with somebody else other than Belichick. Now, the problem is, is he going to find, you know, with this new team, is he going to find the control that he had uh, with New England to where he's going to be able to say, you know, coach, this is what I saw, you know, this is what's happening, this is what's going on. Is he going to have that complete control that he had in New England, I don't think so, but I do think he is going to have a lot of say because of the the veteran quality uh, quality and the leadership quality that he brings. All right, there's a couple stories I want to I want to go over, and this this one actually is the the next biggest right here. Uh, I was so surprised when I heard this; I almost fell out of my chair. Not literally, I literally had to pick myself back up, kind of. Uh, the Minnesota Vikings have agreed to trade wide receiver Stefan Diggs to the Buffalo Bills, a source told Adam Scheffner of ESPN. Here's where, now here's where it gets deep because you got to imagine the Vikings trading their top receiver. They just extended Kirk Cousins for a three uh, three year sixty six million dollar uh, contract. And he's not even out of his $88 million contract that he signed, and they've already signed him to a, a, an extension uh, in return uh, and a tw- in return for Diggs, a 2020 seventh round selection. The Vikings reportedly received Buffalo Bills' first round pick, number 22 overall, the Bills' fifth and sixth round pick in 2020, and a fourth rounder for 2021. So you got to understand the, the 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 level of what they're getting for Stefan Diggs. Now I'm going to say this right off the bat: Stefan Diggs is an excellent receiver. Okay, there are not many receivers still at the top of their game. All right, you you got to realize Dallas just maintained Amari Cooper for a hundred million dollars. They signed him. The deal on. Uh, the deal on Amari Cooper was, let me get that pulled up for you real quick. Amari Cooper was, I've actually got it over here. Sorry about that. I have to grab it off my notebook. Cowboys uh, re-signed Cooper for a $100 million five-year deal. So you're figuring $20 million a year. Again, when a receiver is at the top of his game, that's the kind of money that is going to come out. Uh, you take a, now. This is the other kind of trade that really rocked the the NFL free agency world. And when I read about it, I I, I couldn't understand the logic behind this trade. Uh, the NFL decided not to delay this free agency period for the sports fans. Uh, the uh, division from what's going on in the world couldn't have come a moment too soon. The start of the league year got off to a bang with multi-trade key signings. However, none bigger than the Houston Texans trading away all pro wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins and a fourth round draft pick to the Arizona Cardinals for running back David Johnson, a second round pick and, and a 2021 fourth rounder. The initial response from fans uh, was one-sided with almost everyone feeling the Cardinals committed highway robbery. If you had a quarter for all the people who thought the Houston got that Houston got the better end of the deal, it wouldn't be enough to buy a cup of coffee. Now, let me explain this. All right, so what we're looking at, I, I agree. Now, now, there's no offense to David Johnson, but with, with what DeAndre Hopkins has done for Houston, 
when you trade him, and I don't care if he's at the midpoint of his career at, or not, a 100% mid-range DeAndre Hopkins for David Johnson, really? That is sick. How in the world did this trade happen? There, there, there's got to be more to the story here. And, and, and as that comes out, I will let you guys know. And please, if you want to comment on this, do so. I just don't understand how this trade could happen. That's two number one star receivers that are gone. And what are you going to do, number one, to replace them in the draft? You're going to start a rookie versus Diggs and Hopkins gone now? I mean, good, great idea. How in the world do you overcome that? All right, so we took a look at that. All right, now, now this is another one. Uh, the Bears land the receiver from Dallas, Quinn. Five years, $70 million, and actually Floyd was cut. So let me read a little bit about this. The Chicago Bears and the edge rusher Robert Quinn agreed to a uh, – excuse me, ed, edge rusher Robert Quinn agreed to a five-year contract worth $70 million, in, including $30 million fully guaranteed, his, free, his agency told uh, Ian Rappaport of NFL Network. The Bears also released linebacker and former first-round pick Leonard Floyd. Quinn racked up 11 and a half sacks in 14 games with the Dallas Cowboys last season and missed the first two contests due to a, due to a failed uh, performance-enhancing drug test. The 2019 campaign marked a turnover turnaround for Quinn, who had only managed 6.5 season sacks over a full season with the Miami Dolphins. So let me stop right there. Now, you're looking at a guy that has come off a miraculous, miraculous season. And we're talking about Dallas, and Dallas has got a line. Don't forget that. They have an offensive line. They have a defensive line with good players and strong players. Picking up a, a pick like this in free agency is one heck of a pick, let me tell you. All right, now, let me move down just a little bit. Um, I want to uh, go through and talk about one other thing before I move on to my free agency moves and we'll be done with sports. But I want to talk about why free agency moves happen like this and the money that is put out. When you when you go and sign in, everything that you do in free agency is going to cause problems in your draft. Because when you, when you try to uh, – or not cause problems – it, it, you're going to try to fill holes in the draft so that, I mean, try to fill holes in free agency, excuse me, so that you can actually pick your rookies in the draft and get everybody signed. That's one of the big things. So looking at all of this, okay, now you're asking yourself with, with Bill Belichick not having Brady, what is he going to do? Well, there's a couple of quarterbacks that are, that are open uh, to be able to sign for Brady. Now, now there, I'm, I'm going to mention – Two names here, Andy Dalton, which was the quarterback for uh, Cincinnati, uh, Jameis Winston for uh, the Tampa Bay. He was a quarterback of the Bucks, and now they have Brady. Cam Newton, quarterback for, uh, for Carolina. They signed uh, Teddy Bridgewater to a massive deal. I'll go over that in just a minute. Uh, Jacoby Bursett, uh, he was the starting quarterback for the Colts. Well, now the Colts have signed Phillip Rivers to a one-year deal. And then there's a rookie, a rookie uh, Jarrett Sidham. So in these in these five names, there's two that really stick out to me: Cam Newton being one, uh, Jacoby Brissett being the other one, and then there's one other one, Andy Dalton. Those are the three that I would look at and say, okay, I've got a veteran quarterback that can lead. And I'm telling you, I think Belichick might go after Brissett. Brissett has. Uh, uh, great maneuverability. He has great ability to move around and do what he's doing. He can get in and out of the pocket quick. I think he's a great quarterback. I think that might be either either Bursette would be one, Dalton would be one, or Cam and would be one. Now, you you got to understand something about Cam Newton, too. Uh, the Cam Newton issue that they had, hey, big, big, big Mr. Shepard, what's going on, brother? Thank you for joining me. I appreciate it, appreciate it. Uh, on his way to D.C., uh, Mr. Shepard, join in with me, the sports minion. So real quick, I want to talk about this. Now, Cam Newton did not ask for a trade. Okay, he tweeted out 
that he did not. Um, you know, I, I tell you, he, he just might. I, I look at this, and I'm, I'm honestly thinking that Bursette is a good fit for uh, for the New England Patriots. Again, I talk a little bit about his style. He's got a very quick release like Brady had. It's not, you know, 2.3 where he can get it out of his hands, 2.1, 2.3 but he does have the ability to move around in the pocket a little bit and complete those passes quickly. So Brissett or uh, or Dalton or Cam. Now, again, Cam did not ask for a trade. It, he said that he was forced into it, but here's the thing. As I go through these, these free agency listings, listen to some of these. Brady to the Bucks, $30 million. Cowboys re-signed Cooper, $100 million. Uh, Five-year deal. Um uh, Ger uh, Gerald McCoy to the Cowboys, three-year deal. Uh, let's see, Rivers to the Colts, $25 million, one-year deal. Uh, Thomas Davis to the Redskins, undisclosed contract there. Keenum to the Browns, $18 million, three-year deal. Uh, Bridgewater to the Panthers, three years, $63 million deal. He is going to be the starting quarterback there. Cowboys, uh, Quinn to the Bears, uh, Five-year deal. I just covered that story. Randall Cobb to the Texans, uh, twenty-seven million three. Uh, I hope I wrote that right. Twenty-seven million dollar three-year deal. Uh, let's see. Van Oy from the from New England to the to the Dolphins. Heck of a signing. Fifty-one million dollar four-year deal. Uh, Brad uh, Bradbury from Carolina to the Giants. Three-year, forty-five million dollar deal. Miami. Uh, gets Eric Flowers, $30 million deal. I, I didn't think the Redskins would let him go, but that happened. Flowers is gone. Tied in Austin Hooper from Atlanta goes uh, to, uh, let's see, goes to, wait a minute. Um, I'm trying to figure out this. Uh, from Atlanta to the Browns to be the highest paid tied in in history. And I hope I. Wrote that down right. Sorry about that. Tannehill was re-signed uh, for a, a four-year, um, $118 million extension. And then what we've got is Kinder, Kendall Fuller rejoins the Redskins for $40 million on a four-year deal. So those are the uh, free agency signings as far as, you know, that have come in. And there are plenty more that are coming and going. Uh, teams are moving everywhere, players are moving every, everywhere, and agents are frantic to try to get guys signed. All right, so here's the thing. My biggest question with Kendall Fuller coming from Kansas City, we sent Kendall Fuller and gave away a draft pick to, to, to Kansas City, sent him there. Now we pay $40 million for a four-year deal to get him back in that position, we never should have let him go in the first place. Why in the H-E double hockey sticks are we paying $40 million for the man? The world may never know. All right, that's 30 minutes of sports right there, 28-27 uh, actually. Let's move on to our CP topic. Look, all right, here we go. I I've been wanting to do this for a while, um, and, and this is kind of cool because I'll tell you, a lot of people don't realize – I'm going to do 10 facts about cerebral palsy that a lot of people don't know, okay? And, and I want to, to go over each one of these facts just a little bit and talk just a little bit about CP as a whole. There are so many different uh, uh, versions. There, there are two main versions of, of CP. The one that I'm going to focus on today is spastic dysplasia, okay? Now, we're talking about the, the muscle control, the motor skills, that, that type of thing. CP can affect all, fact number one, CP can affect, cerebral palsy can affect all parts of the body, from the head to the toe, okay? That's fact number one. I'm going to go over this. It can affect sight, it can affect speech. It can affect hearing. It can affect swallowing. It can affect muscle movement. You see some of this a lot of times with CP. You see the head movement. 
it's because it is difficult to control for the brain to control the groups of muscles in the neck to hold that head up that starts very early as an infant. It can affect fine motor skills, this right here, where you go to touch each finger. Watch, if I go here, 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 and the last finger here, see how it touches? But this one, I have to kind of pull this finger over and these three fingers bend down. That's, that's fine motor skills. Picking up pennies, picking up change, uh, picking up things off the floor, off the table that you have to slide and grab, picking up a pencil, that's an example of fine motor skills. Uh, it can It's arm spasticity, tightness, leg spasticity, all of these things are, are uh, examples of some of the things that, uh, that CP can affect. All right, fact number two. You as an individual cannot catch CP in any way, shape, or form. You cannot catch CP. It is not a cold. It is not a virus. It is not something that somebody is going to bump into you or kiss you or make love to you and transfer it. It is one of these things that is a birth defect, which is mainly caused by a lack of of oxygen to the brain, okay? Which means there's some way, shape, or form. Most cases, it's the umbilical cord wrapped around the neck. Sometimes it's involved in labor stopping and starting for the female there. Uh, they wait too long, too long to deliver. Uh, it, there, there can be lots of different types of, you know, reasons for the oxygen to the brain. Um, fact number three. A lot of times, if it's not treated, and I'm going to go in, I'm going to go into this. Let me cover fact two. All right. So we're talking about a birth defect. This happens at birth or during birth. Okay. So understand, people, that it does. It does. You are right about that, Nikki. I'll get into the, I'll get into that in a minute because I've got a pain fact too. For people to understand that this is not a catchable disease. It is not a disease. It is, a, it, is not a, it is a medical condition. It is not a medical condition. It is a birth defect. You've got to realize talking, playing, hanging out, dating, marrying, any of this stuff to a CP individual will not cause this birth defect to transfer. People have to realize, and you've got to get this out of your head, that oh, I'm going to go hang out with this person. I'm going to get a CP. Y'all have got to stop. Put that thing to rest. Fact number three. All right. CP does not mean an individual is going to be mentally delayed. It can affect the brain function in some cases to where there are mental issues, but it does not mean a person doesn't understand or doesn't comprehend. You have to remember the mouth and tongue is a muscle. So when they talk slowly or when they're having trouble getting their words out, it's not because they are mentally delayed. It is because they have a speech problem to where the brain cannot go down to the mouth and send out the messages properly to get the words out. So just because you have CP and a speech problem does, or, or a speech uh, 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 problems with speech does not mean you have a disability. Uh, let me explain this. This is not something that needs to go around and people thinking, oh, he has a disability. I'm not going to talk because his head's down like this. And look, I'm going to give you example. I'm going to give you exam an example of a, a CP issue with speech. My name is DJ. That it, it's not, and I'm not joking, okay? When the, when the words have to form and the words come out slowly, understand that this is going to be an issue with speech therapy that can get better, okay? 
Uh, I, and, and it's, you know, the more you work on it, the more you, the more you use it, the stronger a muscle gets. So understand that is something that people need to understand. Okay. Now, fact number four. Okay. This is a big one. If you keep, okay. If a person has cerebral palsy and they don't do anything, they don't do therapy, they don't do speech, they work their muscles, they have tightness and they're drawn up. CP can progressively get worse. I'm telling you, as an individual that has said, had cerebral palsy for 38 years, therapy, muscle control, working out every day, going to the gym, getting involved in physical activities is great for cerebral palsy because I will cerebral palsy because I will tell you when you use the muscle and you stretch the muscle, it's going to be sore but it's not going to be as tight. If you let the muscles tighten up and you let the muscles seize or they get like this, or the muscles get like this and you can't open your hands because you haven't worked them or you haven't pushed them or you haven't used them, your CP will get progressively worse. Okay. If you don't use it, you're going to lose it. And that's the way to look at that fact. Okay. That is why I say, Martial arts is great for CP. Going to the gym is great for CP. Getting a personal trainer uh, at, a, at a gym is great for CP. Working at different uh, therapeutic uh, 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 outlets, uh, King's Daughters, uh, going to uh, uh, therapy groups and getting involved with an OT and physical therapist, OT and PT, occupational versus physical therapy. We'll get into that in just a minute. All right. Uh, that was fact number four. Fact number five. There is no cure for CP. Now, when I say there is no cure, again, I am not talking about a disease. Let me clarify this. There, there's nothing that I know of, even involved in, in, in stem cell research and all this stuff, there's nothing involved with a cure that I know of, and medical science has come a long way, okay, um, uh, you know, and you and you got to make a lot of decisions. We're going to get ahead of ahead of this just a bit too. Um, but there is no cure to to make you be able to walk. There's no uh, uh, any kind of, of brain stimulus or anything that I know of uh, that that's been uh, progressed or prescribed or anything like that. Um, here's here's a, a well known fact. Um, I, I would. And, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling these numbers as close as I can. I want to say uh, eight out of ten individuals with cerebral palsy suffer from chronic pain. Now, you've got to understand that this is a biggie, okay? This is fact number, uh, fact number six. When you are in a chair longer than than four hours a day when you are confined to a chair. When I say confined to a chair, I mean that you are you're able to get up to go to the bathroom or you're able to transfer into a bed, but you need that chair to get around, to move with your legs. Uh, you can use crutches. I'll get into that in a minute. When you are confined to a chair and you use a chair to get around, okay, there is one very, very, very important thing that you can do for cerebral palsy. When you are confined to a chair, pressure lifts are extremely, extremely important. I'm going to deal with chronic pain in just a minute because I'm going to I'm going to spend some time on this topic. Okay, a pressure lift. Let me explain to you guys what a pressure lift is. Okay, I'm going to back up just a little bit and angle my camera down so you can see. Okay, give me just a second. All right, so let me angle my camera down for a pressure lift. All right, so a pressure lift, if you can see, I'm in my chair right now, okay? So understand, I've undid my seatbelt so you guys can see this. A pressure lift, I'm going to press with my feet, lift up, and go back down. Press with my feet, lift up, and go back down. 
press with my feet, lift up, and go back down. That is a pressure lift. And you need to do that at least, at least twice an hour to prevent pressure sores. That is one of the key things that you can do to prevent a a a uh, a pressure sore or a uh, uh, to prevent pressure sores or, or sores on the body, the buttocks area. Make sure that you do pressure lifts every day at least twice an hour now as far as chronic pain is concerned 96 percent let me get back into my little position here sorry about that 96 percent of individuals that suffer from cerebral palsy have muscle spasms now if you think you know what a muscle spasm is, for a person with cerebral palsy, this is part of the chronic pain. Hey, Sharon, thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. Chronic pain and muscle spasms, again, when you're sitting in a chair and you don't move, your muscles are going to get stiff and they're going to get tight. Now, a muscle spasm is basically a cramp on top of a pulse, on top of a locked muscle. That's the best way I can explain it. And what happens is the muscle itself does this. Okay, but when it doesn't, it, when it does it, it doesn't do this. It does this. It closes and opens and closes and opens, and it causes stabbing pain to go throughout the entire body, and you have to be very, very, very careful with muscle spasms because they are the most painful. <laughs> I can't say that on the radio. They are the most painful things known to man. I'm telling you, you think you get a leg cramp, you think you get a Charlie horse, you get a muscle spasm that doesn't stop. Okay. And, and most of them can, some of them can last all night long. Some of them can last hours. You have to rub them. You have to put heat on them. Some have to take medication. So, so chronic pain is, is a huge part of all of this, okay? Fact number seven, uh, the medicines that people take don't work for everybody with CP. Uh, some people take baclofen, some people take dantrolene, some people take uh, 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 dilantin, some people take a whole bunch of other medicines that I could name. Uh, some people have... Uh, uh, you know, baclofen pumps and different things. Some people have had rhotomies, which is uh, uh, where they actually cut the nerves in the legs to uh, stop tightness and stop muscle spasms. Uh, that's in the hamstring area. I have been on baclofen and dantrolene since I was about eight years old. And I can tell you that medicines like that do help me. I take baclofen twice a day. I was on it three times a day. Uh, I will tell you, it, it, I cut myself down because with baclofen, some of the side effects uh, include weight gain. Uh, some of the side effects include tiredness, depending on the dosage you take and how often you take it. Uh, it doesn't really affect me with the tiredness, but the weight gain did happen. So I I, uh, I cut back on the baclofen to, from, from three times to two times a day. And here's the thing. I If you go off of baclofen for me, I didn't, I didn't suffer withdrawal. Some people may, so you want to consult your doctor before going off or going on a medicine. Make sure that you talk with your physician. Um, uh, you know, I, I honestly would say that, that baclofen and all of this, you know, dantrolene and the different medicines that are out there, uh, quazepam, there's a lot of, you know, muscle relaxing type things that you can do. Uh, there's heat therapy. There's heating pads, there's exercises that you can do, uh, you know, warm water baths, there's a whole, you know, list and plethora of things that you can do for muscle spasms, but they are a beast, and I can tell you they do hurt right off the bat. So uh, that's fact number seven, and I wanted to go over that a little bit. Fact number eight, and, and this is this is kind of a, a tough one. Um, there are you know, manual 
versus power chair. I have heard this a lot, and I've heard it said that a power chair makes you lazy. Okay, now, that all depends in how you go through life, okay? It can if you allow it. A power chair for me, hey, Ronald, thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. A power chair for me, because of the tightness in my arms and the spasticity in my arms, I'm not able to... I was in a manual, a manual chair, which is a chair that you push by yourself. I was in a manual chair for about till I was 18. When I was 18, I, I got into a power chair. And I, when I pushed myself, I was not able to get my arms far enough back to really great, to get a great push off of that manual chair. So for years, I pushed and I leaned forward, pushed and I leaned forward. That actually causes stress on the shoulders, and, and doing a repet any repetitive movement is going to cause stress on the body, stress on you know the shoulders, stress on the back, uh, all of that. Um, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. And, and, and I want to tell you, you know, just just going through, you know, with cerebral palsy, there's so the power chair for long distances, especially, it makes it a whole heck of a lot easier. Also, you learn that I've learned that in a power chair, I can open doors easier because I can reposition myself to hold the door and drive through. You can carry things easier because you have one, one hand to hold things and the other hand is driving. Now, some of the complications uh, with, with power chair versus manual. Uh, when you transfer into a manual chair, you've got to remember a manual chair uh, it is in in the in the weight range of anywhere from 12 to about 30 pounds. Uh, some of them can weigh a little more depending on the type of frame that you get and the metal alloy that you use. Uh, I know some of them can be up in the 35 to 45 range in manuals, but most of the manuals fold. It is very difficult for a power chair to fold without disassembling it. Now, there are some power chairs that do, but again, you have to take uh, the batteries out and that kind of thing to get them to fold properly. Uh, now, here's fact number eight. Uh, I do want to tell you, if you have cerebral palsy and you have a, a power chair, even a manual chair, nine times out of ten, you're going to need a wheelchair van because lifting a 300 pound the, the the power chairs weigh anywhere from 200 to 500 pounds these things are massively huge the turning radiuses are great but to pick this beast up and put it in a car it is very difficult to do it is very hard to do so if you have a power chair nine times out of ten you're going to need a wheelchair van uh, there are uh, areas in, in Virginia that you can get wheelchair vans from. Uh, van House is in, uh, in uh, Hampton. Uh, right Away is in Chesapeake. Uh, the Midst of Virginia is in Waynesboro. Uh, there, are, there are three or four that I know of. Uh, so if you're interested in getting a van, you can look up those places, talk to them. Those guys can get you on the right direction to getting a van. Now, here's the problem. Every time you get a van, be aware that these mechanical ramps and these mechanical doors, they break down, okay? If you get a van, dear God, get a warranty on the van, a full bumper-to-bumper -bumper warranty because it's going to cost you a little bit more. But I'm telling you, as God is my witness, it is worth it in the long run to get a warranty on your vehicle. Because if you do not, if you do not, you're going to have to pay out of pocket when the door breaks down. And most of these places charge you to look at the van anywhere from $75 to $129 per hour. It is labor intensified. Also, you want to make sure to not, if your van has a lowered floor, 
go over bumps at an angle. You will save the life of your van and the life of the parts underneath the carriage if you take bumps at an angle, so be very careful there. Fact number nine. Uh, braces, AFOs, which are called AFOs, crutches, uh, loft strain and under the arm, uh, and also uh, shoes with what's called a lift. There are lots of people in uh, this world that have CP that can use crutches and can walk on, um, well, that, you know, that, that depends on, again, a, a lot of that, going, going back to that there, uh, Nikki, that is true. That is true. When you deal with your when you deal with your chair, it takes an average of thirty to ninety days on parts. Don't let them tell you it's quicker, because it's not. It's not, and they will tell you, "Oh, we can get you this part this time and this time." I've been waiting on my suspension for six months now. We ain't even gonna touch that because if I get into that, I'm gonna end up punching somebody live on the radio, and y'all gonna have to call nine one one to come pick them up off the floor. Cause I ain't in the mood not to punch nobody when they tell me sometime my parts gonna be here and my parts ain't here. That's just me. I'm trying to be calm. Take a breath. Lord Jesus, help me out. Here we go. Okay, so so getting back to braces and AFOs and crutches. Here's the thing: all medical equipment cost insurance is necessary there have been a lot of changes in medicare and medicaid if you need to know go to your local service uh, social services go to your local social security go get uh those of you sorry about that for those of you who just saw facebook cut out we're live and back on uh, i do apologize for that the facebook went down uh, we got about six minutes left in the show really quickly I want to just go over the one thing, uh, fact number 10. We went over the AFOs. We went over the braces and things like that. Uh, you guys can see this, uh, you know, on the, on the two videos. We're going to splice them together. Fact number 10, CP does not mean we are not people too. Fact number 10, and this is the biggest one, understand that just because a person has cerebral palsy, that does not mean they are not a person. They do not have feelings. They do not have thoughts. They do not have aspira uh, aspirations. They want to be part of life just like you do. And if you treat them as a person and you treat them normally and you treat them as the people that they are, just because they have a disability doesn't give you the right to, 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 to diss them or make them out to be, you know, what they're not. I've covered 10 facts about cerebral palsy. I've covered facts about how it works, the do's and don'ts, what cerebral palsy is. Go back in the last video I just did. I'm sorry that Facebook went awry there for a moment. Uh, and, and, you know, the last couple of minutes of the show, if you guys have questions about any of this, and I, there are, there are hundreds of facts about CP. I could do you know, two or three of these shows, no problem. But the thing about it is, remember, starting next week, the Sports Minion Radio Show moves to Friday at 5.30. Also, uh, my CP does not define me. It's the, the premiere episode. I'm covering all CP on Wednesdays at 2. So the Sports Minion Radio Show is moving to 5.30. Yes, Nikki, you are absolutely right. Remember, if you want to catch me with the Sports Minion Radio Show, Friday at 5.30, my CP does not define me is taking place of this show, which is still going to be an hour long, still going to be on Wednesdays, and still going to be from 2 to 3. So catch me next week, uh, Wednesday and Friday. Also, I have a great announcement. I have uh, another show that is on OPTV. Uh, I'm actually working with another group and doing a show with them through OPTV called Ordinary People TV. Uh, I'm with Devontae Goings, a great individual. Uh, it's Random Realness with the double Ds, DJ and Devontae, not these, but those. Uh, if you would, go check that out. And that is going to be Monday at uh, – it's going to be Monday at 4 o'clock from 4 to 5. So I have a show on Monday. I have a show on Wednesday. I have a show on Friday. DJ is blowing up, y'all, blowing up. So listen, 
I always say, if you can't be good, be bad, but geek, be good at it. You can email me at the Sportsman Radio Show at yahoo.com. You can uh, catch me on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash the Sportsman Radio Show. You can catch me under DJ Carter. You can catch me under Dennis Carter for the Sportsman Radio Show. Please, you can follow me on Twitter. Dear Lord, guys, I need Twitter followers. Help me out. Follow me on Twitter at uh, – uh, the Sports Minion Radio Show at Minion Sports is the Twitter handle. So go check that out. Go follow that. Uh, if you can't be good, be bad, but be good at it. Thank you guys for tuning in. Remember, again, Friday at 5.30, the Sports Minion Radio Show will be uh, airing then from 5.30 to 6. And then the uh, My CP Does Not Define Me will be at uh, on next Wednesday, the premiere episode. We are looking forward to seeing you. I really appreciate all you guys joining in. Share the videos. Share the topics. Please get these out there. Remember to get ready for the CP Virtual Conference coming up. Uh, that's going to be on uh, Friday. This, uh, 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 excuse me, this Thursday. Uh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This Friday at 1130. Uh, so make sure that you guys are ready for that. Uh, talk to Miss Winnie. You can email her at Kelly's K E L L Y S Choice C H O I C E Care C A R E S. If you want to be part of this, um, thank you so much, Nikki. I appreciate that. Josh, I appreciate that. JP, thank you for joining us. Uh, J- uh, Mr. Shepard, thank you for joining me. All uh, sharing all these guys and, and ladies that have come in. I hope these facts have helped you. I hope all of you guys have enjoyed the show. Remember, I want to say this one more time to make sure you guys know the conference is coming up Friday. Email Miss Winnie if you want to be a part of it. Virtual conference is going to be often awesome. Uh, the uh, Sports Menu Radio Show is going to be on Friday, uh, 5.30 to 6. My CP Does Not Define Me is going to be on Wednesday from 2 to 3, same time it is right now. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I love you guys to death. I could not do this without you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Mwah! From the bottom of my heart, I love you guys to death. Uh, you guys are great. I, I know the glowing a kiss on Facebook Live was a little bit weird. Sorry about that. Please don't hate me. <laughs> I hope you guys have a great day. This is D to the J with a roll away saying we'll see you next week for my CP does not define me on Wednesday from 2 to 3 and the Sports Minion Radio Show at 5.30 on Friday and Random Realness with the Double Ds, Devontae and DJ on Monday at 4 o'clock. Guys, I'm everywhere. I'm blowing up like a balloon. So please come follow me and see me soon. If you can't be good, be bad, but be good at it. This is DJC saying see you when I see you. Peace.